Why, hello there. We were just about to try some of Master Metzli's delightful wines. Oh, would you care to join us? Oh, they do look ever so tasty. Ah, Mrs. Hybury, I prefer to conduct tastings individually, so I may assess your palate. Call me Cora, Master Metzli. And I'm afraid I must insist on their joining us. Wine's no good without company, after all. No. I must say, if this is a practical joke, it's not very amusing. Why, a serial killer? Oh, that's terrible. Master Metzley, are you quite all right? It was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You have sullied it with knowledge, made it an unclean sacrifice. I will remember your face. And I will peel it from your skull, should you interfere again. Hold your breath if you're here to see Figaro. Oi, you! Get in the bloody queue! It's unusual for prey to supply the tools of its own butchery. Razors, scissors, nail files. So many cuts one couldn't make. And yet, such a fleeting window. But then, who am I to deny the auspices of destiny? For we are celebrating, Master Figaro. You have the delicious honor of being my crowning achievement. Your body is my ultimate gift to my lord, Bar. 
together, we shall transcend. A challenger, my lord, tests me. This pity is awful. Will be your grave challenger. Savor your final breath. I should have known it would be you. Thank you. If it had been the dwarf alone, we might have stood a chance. But these doppelgangers, oh, they swarmed us. We were paralyzed before we even had the chance to fight back. I was heading that way after we last spoke, when I heard a commotion. I stepped in to see what was going on. It's not every day you have the chance to catch a killer in action. Not even in this profession. These killings aren't random. In fact, they seem to be part of some sort of test. That document you showed me before, the one with the victims' names on it, that was the briefing. The killers paralyze their victims, take their hands as an offering for Baal, and make it look like the cult of the Absolute was behind it all. It grants them access to a tribunal. From what I could gather, it's some sort of rite of initiation for aspiring cultists to prove their worth. And it's taking place beneath Candle Hallow's tombstones. Like I said before, it's not something I can look into in an official capacity. But you... And I'll pick up where I left off. The Upper City. When I'm done, I'll stop by the Basilisk Gate. If you've got anything to... What's up for discussion? I see it, sweetie. Let me back in. I'll bring Laroakin out here. Yet sin shoop. You tell the Roachin I went for his god's damn night song, and now he has to pay up. What are you looking at? Shit, it's you. You went looking for the night song after me. Please tell me you found it. You lost fewer people along the way than I did. Bloody goblins. Laroakin should have warned us. If she's out there, I'm gonna find her. You mark my words. You! What are you doing here? This is, uh, my apprenticeship. It has not been what I expected. Master Laroakin is... Um... A difficult man. He's consumed by his pursuit of the night song. I haven't learned a thing, and I fear it'll stay that way. <clears throat> but never mind that. What can I do for you? It's all I deal with these days. People claiming their trinkets are the real night song. Looking for the mountain of gold the rower can promise. There's even a pamphlet. Take one. They're on the desk. Be very sure before you make to visit the Roakan. He's got a beastly temper. 
But if you really do know something, he'll want to see you. Head upstairs. You can find a way into his tower up there. Perhaps not. Literature department. Can I help you? Psst. These books are sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. You might have heard that our library has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Lerokin was reluctant to house them in his tower. The pen is mightier than the magic wand, apparently. <laughs> They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Tharkia Codex, the Annals of Cassius and Netherese Folly, Sites of the Sea, and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? It is said to be written by Lord Cassius himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra. Failed. Knowledge lies within those pages, but not many can withstand it. That's it. That's what I need. The annals of Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the crone's true nature. If only you could read them. Simple knowledge of these tones is enough to stimulate most. Welcome back, dear patron. Remember that the great wizard doesn't suffer fools who waste his time. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. Uh, Craig's aim is much improved, but uh, still leaves something up to chance. Yes, sir. All right, Crank. Ready? Aim. Oh. Mm. We have a visitor. At ease. McClaw, you may go. Song. 
Surely you wouldn't have entered my tower without the Night Song in hand, hmm? Surely my worthless apprentice wouldn't have allowed you to waste my time? Huh. Fascinating. You've been to Shah's temple, haven't you? To the Shadowfell? <sighs> Alas, I've paid for a good deal of very privileged information. Now I await the results of the generous contract I've commissioned. Answer now, or see what happens when fools misuse my valuable time. I'm growing tired of this repartee, my friend. Let us cut to the chase. Beautiful, isn't it? Worth more than your life, too. I bought it from a Kalashite warlock. Very little of his soul left to him. Mm. It can bind a celestial to the wearer's service with a snap of the fingers. And this? This can keep her in place. Forever. Hmm. We shall see, won't we? Do as I say, and you will be rewarded beyond imagination. Fail, and you give up the prize to the next motivated mercenary to encounter my contract. The choice is yours, but make no mistake, I always get what I want. Curse to put my hands on everything. Vaults. Hardly a challenge. some valuable knowledge hidden between these pages. Uh, you 
have arrived in the nick of time, saintly adventurer. I've been trapped for so long, I dare say I'm half mad! Ho ho! <laughs> Thank you for sacrificing yourself to save me. Such courage brings a tear to the eye. <laughs> oh, a sorcerer. Such relief! I know one of your prowess will have no issue escaping. Simply get someone to swap places with you, or you'll be stuck in here for all eternity. Toodles! <laughs> oh, freedom, sweet nectar! How I missed you. Oh, my rescuer left behind a servant. I'm terribly sorry for your loss. I'm sure you're at your wit's end without your master. Ya fail, the stupendous! Or was it wondrous? But I'm free! And that's all that matters. Know that I will remember your master's sacrifice with great affection. Every month or so. But I must be off. I'm a century late for an appointment. Now, now. Your master touched a lamp like a ding-a-ling. Which means this is your problem, not mine. But if you're after a fight, so be it. Ugh, it's been too long since I flexed these glorious magical muscles. Aha! In book. So that's progress. Touch me. Symbol. are watching me. Step carefully. There's a trap. Traps about.
You feel its connection, its longing to be opened, to share its secrets. You open the book to the first page, with its shifting glyphs and strange whispers. shadows. They pull at you, dragging you closer. The glyphs scream, branding your mind with strange runes. You see time rewritten, fate undone. Your future thrumming with power. The book snaps closed. You've seen too much. What profane knowledge is now seared inside of you, you should never have known. The book radiates power. But the words you read in the Codex echo in your mind, guiding your eyes safely across the page. The once indecipherable glyphs now feel dangerously familiar, promising unholy power to those who can take it. As you pass the strange glyphs, you can feel the book resisting. Ghostly voices whisper at you from the dark, probing and fighting your mind. But your will is iron, and you brush past these shades of the past, devouring every secret the book has to offer. You see now life and death are malleable as clay, to be bent and reshaped by your will by your power. But as you close the book, a nagging doubt whispers in your mind. What consequences will there be for calling the dead from their rest? Fold.
took on Netherese's magic. Gale might like to know. The annals of Carsus. The preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. If the crown atop the Elder Brain was truly forged by Carsus himself, this book will confirm it. All we have to do is turn the page. Raphael was telling the truth. There's no doubt. The crown of Carsus is what's controlling the Elder Brain. And this, this is no mere journal. It contains Carsus's original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. Mm, not from scratch. Unless you happen to have several pounds of the purest Netherese metals in that pack of yours. Don't worry. I'm not asking you to surrender anything else on my account. What's called for here is something altogether different. The book states that the crown and netherstones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three netherstones, and with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think... I could reforge it. To every end you can imagine, and a thousand more beyond. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last would be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. I don't know. Ao does not look kindly on gods meddling in mortal affairs. She may have no choice but to stand by and let events unfold. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Carsus's successor. Do you think I had not considered that? I have no intention of repeating his folly. Powerful as he was, Carsus lacks some advantages I can lay claim to. I know Mistra intimately, and I carry a fragment of the weave itself within my body. Carsus achieved many things, hmm, but he never managed that. A long road lies ahead before the crown comes into our possession. All I ask for now is that you do not dismiss this possibility out of hand. Please, at least think on it. This is no passing whim. Trust me. If I can obtain that crown, it will affect us all. It's not a decision I'll take lightly. It's our future that I'm thinking of. Can't rely on anyone else to do it for us. For now, we've learned all we can. Whatever comes of this, we cannot allow the crown to be reforged in Raphael's image. A devil wielding the might of Carsus. It would be the end of everything. How about this? Heal me, damn you!
get some rest. I need to keep sharp. Mother's milk, your visage speaks of ill tidings. Speak, ally mine. What troubles you? Let us not dwell on those dark days. Their memory is a vortex within my heart that leads directly to the hells. Is he indeed? Pray tell, what does he seek from Dame Aelin? Let them come, and let them find me. Dame Aelin will strike down any who seek to bring her to harm's own. Yet, it is better to cut off the head of the snake than to let its slithering snakeling swarm us unabated. This wizard, this wizard, must be held to account. I will wring his neck until he's dead. Oh, his end will be one more strand in the great braid of our friendship. I'm coming with you. I'd like to get a few licks in myself. My darling, we agreed you'd scout for the nearest Salunite Enclave this very night. Let us divide our efforts, all the sooner to be reunited. I won't let you go alone. Who knows what this wizard might have planned? Our closest ally will accompany me, won't you? It will be a swift and fruitful chore. Hie we to this Laroican right away. I am as eager to meet him as he is to ensnare me. I should speak up. Welcome, dear patron, to Sorceress Sundry. I am an unperson in service of the revered wizard Lerokin, proprietor of this fine establishment. To browse our wares, say, trade. To provide information about the night song, say, night song. If you are a city official here to collect dues, say, taxes. For all other inquiries, say, other. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your query. To browse our wares, say, trade. To provide information about the night song, say, night song. If you are a city official here to collect dues, say, taxes. For all other inquiries, say, other. You are not Mr. Marvin Hudd, the collections officer assigned to this establishment. Logic detected. Petition approved. Enjoy. How else can I help you today? To learn more about the search for the Night Song, say, Night Song. To learn more about Master Laroican, say, Laroican. To learn more about my good self, say, Projection. I am the product of an ingenious bit of magic performed by Master Laroican. I am blessed with sufficient intelligence to adequately run and protect the shop, Sorceress Sundries. Because Master Laroican is engaged in important work, I take care of such banalities as speaking with customers. To truly know Master Laroican is the work of a lifetime. Suffice it to say, he is a powerful, important man whose powers exceed the limitations by which most wizards are constrained. He resides in Ramazith's tower. Anyone bearing information leading to the capture of the Night Song may gain an audience with him. The Night Song is a relic hidden in an underground temple 
beneath a settlement near the river Chionthar. Master Laroakin is offering a considerable sum for the object's retrieval. Here we go. What have we here? A magician in a tower, hiding away from the frightening world. What are you so scared of, Magus? Not the Night Song, surely? Why, she's nothing but a relic to be purchased and pursued. My God. The Night Song is a person. At last. There you are, my dear. You will address me with due deference. I am Dame Aelin. And you are a whelp without honor, without pride, with nothing but a tower full of trinkets. My apologies, Dame Aelin. I meant no disrespect. Perhaps we could start over. I am the Rowican. I am most pleased to make your acquaintance. And that of your fine companion, who perhaps heard I was looking for you. Dame Aelin, I have discovered a device that would allow your immortality to be shared. It would cause you no harm, no pain of any kind. You serve your mother, Saluna, I believe. She who has blessed our realm with so many gifts. Honor her by sharing yours. You do not seek to share my gifts. You seek to poach them. You dare to threaten me with the same magic that held me in torment for a hundred years! <laughs> I had hoped to appeal to your better nature. Perhaps I overestimated you. Hmm. No bother. I have an arsenal of implements capable of convincing you to see reason. But his magic lives. I'd hoped you to keep an open mind. But it seems you're determined to make this as difficult as possible. Boy, at the ready. Once I've taken control of the Asima, she must go directly into the caging runes. No, Master Lerorkin. I would never have assisted you if I knew you planned such horrors. You lied to get the Night Song here. Made us all believe she was nothing but a relic. I have seen what true leadership can accomplish, but never under your tutelage. Watch your tongue, you child. I could make it such that no wizard in the realm will touch you. If they're all like you, I think that sounds like an excellent bargain. <laughs> oh, face us, charlatan! We who detest you so! Mamadons! Imperatum! Take you. see me caged you who would purchase my submission with profane gold let every wicked magus every vile murtherer each slaver and misery merchant see dame aelin is watching she is indomitable 
And when her face lights the shadows of your wrongdoing, you are broken by its beauty! The Firehead Fool is dead. Yet as I stare upon his corpse, I feel... ...sadness. Why? A gripping in the chest. As though I'd lost someone. Something. Uh, uh, Paladin's fatigue, no doubt. You were excellent in battle. As is your way. And I am proud to fight at your side. And you, tiefling. You did not embarrass yourself. I will catch my breath. Then to camp I will bring my bones. Moon Maiden be with you. The Rurikin is dead. The bastard is dead. I am. Now that the bastard's in bits. Leroican was a cruel and vicious man. By day, I'd tend the shop, but at night, he'd fire the most nonsensical questions at me. And for every one I answered wrong, he'd beat me. I could have killed him with my own two hands. But I kept thinking it was all a test. It had to be. I thought it was the price I had to pay to become a true wizard. I realize now he was just a sick, sick man. I have, with your considerable help. I see things clearly now. If I wish to master the weave, I must do it myself. Thankfully, I have everything I need right here. <laughs> oh, I like the sound of that. I do indeed. I'll move Cal and Leah in immediately. The Roican refused to let them stay here. They are gonna love the tower. I wouldn't have this, the tower, my family, without you. What can I do to thank you? And you'll have me. I'll learn everything I can about the tower in the meantime. Even if I have to rip this place apart. But know this. Ramazith's tower and its master are now your friends. And when the time comes, we will stand by you as allies. <laughs>